Glenn McCrory, former IBF World Cruiserweight Champion, joins us today on VIP TV with some pretty big news. Um, you know, you called me yesterday, Glenn. I saw something on Twitter this morning. Are you fighting Evander Holyfield? I am. I am. Yeah, I spoke to Evander uh, a couple of nights ago and said we watched the, the, the Tyson fight. I was doing it for BT Sport, which was, which, which was great. Um, and it was, it, was, it, was, it was one of those things. I phoned Evander just to see what he thought of it. Um, and then when we were talking, it got, it got me back into a conversation that we should have had 30 years ago about me and him fighting. And um, he said, well, let's do it. And you know, I said, well, I thought you were fighting Mike Tyson. And he said, well, you know, let's, let's me and you do it. And I said, well, you know what? That was, that was my... That was my goal. That was, that was my whole life was to fight Evander Holyfield because all I wanted to do was fight the best. I wanted to fight the best. And, um, and Evander moved up to heavyweight. I was number one contender for his title. He moved up to heavyweight. And that, and that dream went away for Pat Lumumba. I won, the, I won the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. But for me, it was, it was, a, it was never the same as, as beating the best ever and the best cruiserweight ever in the world is Evander Holyfield and, and for me that would be my legacy to beat him so um, so I think we're going to do it yeah. so have you, oh, it's amazing stuff that you're coming back after all this time and uh, seven years yeah, 27 years 27 years and and I, I feel I feel the same now as I felt then I, I feel like it's it, my career, I had, a great, I had a great career. I retired at 25 because bad management, 25. I never, ever got the chance to hit my prime. I never got the chance to be at my very best. And, you know, if, if there's one thing you'd want to do, age is but a number. So it doesn't matter. If there's one thing you can do, it's, it's to test yourself. And yep. Evander would be a great test. Last year, I climbed the eighth highest mountain in the world, Banasu, yep. um, with no training whatsoever. And it was the, the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. It was, it, was, it was no joke. But if I can do that, to come back and box, that's, that's what I'm built for. That's, that's who I am. That's a piece of cake. Have, um, have, 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 you, have you and Evander spoke to any promoters about where it could be? Obviously, it's going to be a few months off. But have you, a promoters in touch? Have you, you liaised with anyone? Is it going to be British, America? Yeah, you know, there is promoters in touch. I, I work with the BKB boys. I work with the yeah. Bare Knuckle Boxing boys, um, Jim Freeman and, and Joe Brown, who are great guys. And they, they, they have... They have made a point, you know, they, they, you know, we did a show on, on Friday, they've done world title fights with Jimmy Sweeney and, you know, I mean, they, they're really good guys. So, um, so we're, I'm, I'm looking at them, I'm looking at them to, um, to bring, to pull this off. Um, they want to go into boxing. They want to get to the wide audience. They've done great pay-per-view shows. So, um, yeah, we're looking at them at the moment. So they're going to, they're speaking with Evander's people and, yeah, they're speaking with Evander. Um, they're talking about venues. They're talking about the O2, when we can get crowds in. Um, we're looking at April. Um, so it's great. What it does, Steve, is it gives me a new lease of life. At 56, you know, I'm, I look at me. I'm a young man. What, what do you say? Because, okay, what, you know what a, a lot of people are going to say about this fight, at your ages and all that. You know, what, what is your message to people? And there's going to be a lot of them, Glenn, who are going to not worry about it, say you're too old, worry about the health of Evander and you. What would you say to them? Do you know, Mike Tyson just showed us the other night, he just showed us that he's still, he's still a fighter. He's still a handful. He was in with Roy Jones. Roy Jones is one of the greatest fighters of all time. And, he was, and Roy Jones couldn't handle him. Mike Tyson was unbelievable. So, you know, yes, you know, people will always, people will always say too late, shouldn't happen, whatever. Of course it's not. Evander Holyfield is still a handful. It doesn't matter whether if, if he's 105, he's still a handful. I'm still a handful. So, you know, it doesn't matter when we do it. 
it, 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 it's, it's all about the here and now. And you know what? People need something to get cheery about. Some people need something in their lives. You know, I've, I've, been, I've been down and out over the last few months. It's been, you know, as, as have so many, <coughs> as, excuse me, as, as have so many people. Um, so we need, we need this in our lives. You know, we need this. Me and Amanda need to lock on. You know, this is unfinished business. And it doesn't matter when it is. I've got Johnny Nelson on the phone saying, you know, he's going to challenge me. You know, you know, couldn't fight me then, can't fight me now. <laughs> you know, so it doesn't matter what, it doesn't matter how old we are, Steve. It's about, it's about, it's about a legacy. It's about who we are and what we are. Yeah. And uh, what's the plans after that? I mean, you know. Mike it, Tyson, Tyson unfinished business. Do you know what? I could have beat Mike Tyson when I was 21. And he got all, I, I was very badly mismanaged. And, you know, I am still hungry. I'm still hungry. You know, I, never got, I never got them glory days. I never got them big purses. So if they come now, you know, Holyfield, Tyson, let's whip them up, man. And uh, so, um, so what's your plans now? You obviously enjoy the rest of the year with your family, enjoy it, and then I guess January, back on it like you was. And, you know, tomorrow, you know, we, we've got lockdown restrictions come out tomorrow. I'm in the gym tomorrow, which I was always going to be. I was always going to be in the gym. I'm fit. I'm healthy, you know. And then we, we, we'll, we'll get into training camp for the, for the Holyfield fight. Um, in, in, in January, you know, I'll, I'll go away. And, and the thing I've never had, Steve, I never had training camps. I never had nutritionists, dietitians. I never had a, tra a professional trainer. I never had that. This time, I'm going to have all of it. Who, I'm going to have everything. Who are you going to have training you? Because it's going to be a bit tricky for someone with a border control license, isn't it, to come in and be in your corner? You know, we know people work behind the scenes and stuff. But it's going to be tricky having an actual a border control license holder in your corner of the night because they're not going to have it at all, are they? They're not. So what are you doing for the next few months? <laughs> no, I'm not a trainer. I'll be a pundit on the night. No, you know, I want, to have, I want to have the best people around me. I want to have the best people around me. Jimmy Tibbs was with me when I fought Lennox Lewis. Um, and Jimmy's the greatest you know he's, he's the, the for me the best trainer Britain's ever produced so um, I'd love that you know, I haven't had this conversation yet but um, you know we can do it properly I've never had a training camp I've never had a proper training camp for my whole career so um, it'd be great to do that it'd be great to be able to pick and say who do you want who do you want I remember you know I had a, a great story with Manuel Stewart Manuel Stewart I was commentating on a, on a fight me and Ian Dart were commentating on a fight um, in Memphis, and Money was Money Stewart was there, and the greatest compliment I ever had was Money Stewart said, "You know what? There's only one fight that got away from me. There's only one fight I ever wanted, and that was you, Glenn." And I was like, "Why did you fold me, Money? Why did you <laughs> ever fold me?" It was, it, it was, what could I have done if I had a trainer like Money Stewart? I trained myself. I was self-trained. I did, I did it all myself. What could I have had if I had money, Stuart? So this time we'll do it right. I'm not going to take Evander Holyfield for granted. I'm not going to take my time. I'm not going to do any of that. If we go in with the best, this time we'll be the best. And what, what, what about your weight? What, are you going to weigh 16, 17 stars? I don't know what your weight is. You look well enough in your face there. Obviously, you know, you're going to lose a bit, but... I'm, 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 in, I'm in good shape. I've been, I've been walking and, and running um, an awful lot over the, over the lockdown. So um, I'm, in, I'm in decent shape. I, I will just come in as a heavyweight. The thing is, Evander Holyfield, you know, back in his glory days, was up at 16 stone, pumped up, um, juiced up, whatever, whatever you might say. He's not anymore. So, yeah, we're going to have the real Evander in there. Um, so uh, he's going to be lighter than me. I'm going to be at my, at my best. I'm going to be about 15 and a half stone. So I think it's, 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 it's going to be great. And, uh, you know, I want to see how good he is. I want to see how good he was. I want to see the legacy that I saw with, with him and Mike Tyson, with him and Lennox. I, I want to be part. I missed out on that. I was commentating. I was like you. I was sitting, I was sitting ringside for them great fights when – 
in my heart, I wanted to be in there. In my heart, I missed all that. Now I've got the chance to get that back. And obviously, you know, there'll be financial rewards. As you said, it's like for millions of people who, you know, do well, they've had a terrible eight, nine months. Like you're out on your after dinner circuit, you're doing bits of training and all that. Suddenly that's ripped away from you. So the financial is going to help as well, obviously. 100%. You know, I never got, I got seven and a half thousand pounds for winning the world title. $15,000 at the time. And I had two managers both take their cut, 33% and 25%. I signed off the dole. I signed off the dole live on ITV. I signed off the dole way back in 1989. Only just. So I, I, I had a really tough, you know, it was really tough. Now they're talking about silly money. So, um, so I deserve that. No, as you say, so you're honest, you know, you said the last few months, as you said, the last, since March, you've been, you know, I think you used the word down and out, which because, you know, you're out, you say the dinner circuit, media work, you know, you people want you to train you. You know, suddenly your earnings are taken away from you. Just because you've won a world title doesn't mean you've got stacks of dough in the bank. That was 30, you got no money and that was 30 years ago. So... And I owned, and, uh, and I earned $15,000 then. <laughs> so I had to play Lennox Lewis just to pay the tax man. So, uh, so it, was, it was a very tough career. So... You know, if, if I can grab some, some back now, that'll be great. You know, and if, if Avanda can, Tyson can, if, if any of them names can, that, then that's great. You know, but um, it's not about, it's never been, Steve, it's never been about the money for me. It can't never. be, you never earned any. <laughs> <laughs> but it's never been about the money. It's about, it's about a legacy. It's about, I should have been up there with the great names. They brought my fight forward. And I lost my world title. And that was, you know, they took it off me. So it was, I could, I sh I could have and should have been so much a, bit, a better fighter. I should have been up there with them great names. Yes, I fought Olympics. Yes, I was in the ring 96 rounds of my title. Yes, I was there. But I was on the periphery of that. I don't want that anymore. It's, it's, it's now or never. It doesn't matter if we're 56. I can still beat Evander Holyfield any day of the week. Brilliant. Well, Glenn, great talking chat. We'll get this out. I'm sure we'll get plenty of reaction to it and uh, people will be contacting you with their opinions. <laughs> let's, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's, let's, when, they look, when they look at the legacy of the Cruiserweight division, I want them not to think of me as a nearly man because he didn't do this. I want them to look at me and think he was the best there ever was. No, you can't be a nearly man. You won a world title. You know, an IBF world title. So you can't, you're not a nearly man, but I, I think you're getting it. You want to be held up there the same esteem as what Holofield. You know, I don't want. Them, I don't want people to say. I don't want people to say. Oh, he couldn't be. You know, he was down there. You know, he won the world title. You know, Johnny Nelson. Blah blah blah. They couldn't. They couldn't tie my shoelaces. And Mike Tyson will tell you that. You know, I I scored Mike Tyson in his prime. And and you know. You know, we, we, we sparred really, really well. And, and that's, not, that's not a joke or anything. That's real. That, that part, they can never iron out. So, you know, when they think of me and the great cruiserweights, I want them, and I'll prove it. I'll prove it when I beat Evander Holyfield. Glenn, thanks very much for joining us on VIP TV and giving us the update on your uh, ring return. Thank you, Steve. God. For all boxing. Info, news and latest interviews, Amateur and Pro, across and off, click and subscribe. VIP Boxing Promotions, also Twitter, Instagram and Facebook.